Hey guys, welcome back to GVS Academy. Now, in this video, we are going to learn about loops. And in our last video, also we have learned about loops. In our last video, we have learned about while loop, right? So in this video, we are going to learn about for loop. This for loop is a simple concept. You will not have to worry much. Uh, while loop is also simple but yeah it needs some practice and a deep level of understanding of how the program gets executed so as to make use of make a best use of that uh, while loop right so but for this for loop in python it's a simpler way to loop through the iterable objects what is iterable objects Iterable objects are nothing but through which we can iterate. In the sense, there are lists, tuples, dictionaries, sets, and strings. These are all iterable objects through which we can iterate. And what exactly does this actually mean? All these things we are going to see in this video practically, right? So you don't have to worry or you don't have to uh, get concerned if uh, you don't understand the theoretical definition. You don't have to understand theoretical definition at all. You simply need to understand how it works. That's it. Now, let's take an example uh, of a list, okay, loops through uh, list example. Let's, let's say, uh, just take an example of, let's create a list called as my friend, okay, and uh, let me add some names in this list, okay, okay so we have around five names in this particular list so the list has been created now what exactly do i mean when i say iterations iterations in the sense the number of time the code will run see how to write this for loop to write this for loop it's extremely simple you simply need to do you simply need to type for x in my friend and this colon then hit enter right as soon as you hit enter this cursor comes inside this for loop see as you can see there is an indentation the cursor is not blinking here it's it's blinking blinking here in the sense we are right now inside this for loop so whatever code we will write whatever program we will write it is what uh, we are saying that uh, So whatever code we will be writing inside this for loop will be executed multiple times and how many times it will execute it will execute the number of times the code will execute inside for loop will depend on the number of uh, number of items inside this object or called as list see right now how many items we have inside this list rakesh ritesh amar gopal and vishal one two three four five so five items are there so whatever code we will be writing whatever code we will write here will execute five times why five times because there are five items inside this list right if there are 10 items in the list then whatever co whatever code we will write here will execute 10 times right so execute term we can replace it by iterate okay so it will how many times it will iterate it will iterate five times it will execute five times so now i hope you have understood this meaning of what exactly is this iteration means now let's see and what happens is the main difference is see uh, when the code is executing for the first time this x value will be rakesh and once this code is executed and the second time when the when this code is running the x value will become ritesh and the third time when the code is getting executed this x value becomes amar fourth time this x value becomes gopal fifth time x value becomes vishal right so this x value will keep on changing 
based on the items that are available inside our iterable object that is called as list the name of the list the, uh, this list is my friend okay so let's stop this here let's see the practical example for x in my friend a printable uh, sorry a simplest program that we can write here is just to print out the output so as i said the x will keep on changing the first execution x will be rakesh second execution x will be ritesh third execution x will be amar fourth will be gopal and fifth will be vishal so don't go with my words so ask python whether it is true or not so in order to ask python we need to display the output right so if x if i say x is equals to amar then ask python to print it out so simply we'll use print function and say hey print it out so now what i did i have written a for loop and inside for loop what is the command that i have given uh, there is nothing uh, to do here simply just show us what is the value of x every time you execute this program so how many times this program will execute program will execute for one two three four five five times and every time the x value will get changed and if the x value gets is getting changed it will have to obviously print the x value in the output right so so by theoretically theoretical knowledge we can assume that these names will get printed so let's go and see if it is true or not let's save and run this program scroll down let me clear this uh, output here okay so let's run this program again uh, there is some syntax error or indentation error expected indentation block after for statement on line one um okay uh, sometimes it happens unexpected error or there is nothing to do here yeah yeah print so yeah as you can see how many times the code has run in the sense how many times the code has been executed it's uh, it has been executed five times so every time it is getting executed what is uh, the actual uh, command that we have told python to do is simply you don't have to calculate or do any uh, calculations simply show me what is the value of x so first time when the code executed or iterated then the value of x was rakesh the second time the value of x was ritesh third time it was amar fourth time it was gopal and fifth time it was vishal so what is happening over here number one thing first thing you need to note it down is code will iterate or execute code will execute and the number or let's say number of times the code inside the for loop will execute to equal to the number of items inside the object object in the sense this list okay so here i have taken an example of list but yeah you can uh, we can write for loop inside uh, you know tuples for strings or for dictionaries for sets all those iterable objects we can go ahead and write for loop so the number of times the code will run inside for loop is equal to the number of items available in the list or items available in the object inside which we are writing the for loop and second uh, num second thing you need to note it down is every time the code is being executed or iterated the value of x will get replaced with of item it is not technically how it works but yeah for understanding purpose basically what happens is the index is copied or uh, yeah uh, so don't worry about those things right now this is 
very extremely extremely easy to understand in this way so please visualize it in this way itself so this will clear your all doubts uh, slowly right so yeah as soon as we write for x in in is a keyword that we will use x in my friend and then colon whatever we ex write the command the command will get executed number of times uh, the number of times will be equal to the number of items and every time it is being executed the value of x will change to the next item right so this is the default case so let's see the same case with uh, let's say tuple so how to create tuple we simply use this uh, uh, curly brackets or uh, what it what is it called it is called as parenthesis right so yeah this kind of brackets we will be using um yeah let's say my tuple friend okay just for a naming purpose i'll i'll copy this whole thing same items i'll use but instead of the square brackets i'll use this this kind of brackets all right so now this is a tuple now uh let's go ahead and write let's let's uh, let's change these values or uh, okay let's keep it as it is now go ahead and write your for loop the action the result will be absolutely same for x in my tuple friend colon now print it print x that's it it's as simple as that now run this program Rakesh Rite Samar Gopal Vishal, Rakesh Rite Samar Gopal Vishal. So the list items and tuple items are absolutely same, right? So the tuple is getting the tuple is also getting executed, Rakesh Rite Samar Gopal and Vishal. Every time it is executing, it is replacing the x value and printing it in the output. That is what we have asked it for, to do, right? Um now let's take an example of a string. Let's say there is a long string uh, through which we want to loop. Not, not just a list or tuples or dictionaries or sets you can even loop through strings as well let's take an example let's say uh, my long name friend okay so here i'll write a, i'll take a name um let's say gaushia ziba fatima so this is a long name uh, she is our teammate so uh, this is a this is her full name so Oshia Ziba Fatima so let's go ahead and uh, try to use for loop to iter iterate throughout this particular string so this is a name name is nothing but a string right so now let's go ahead and write our for loop for x in my long friend colon enter print x it says it's as simple as that now what will happen uh, every time it will iterate um, how many times it will get iterated it will get iterated to the number of items so, so how many numbers are there gh 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 almost 17 times it will have to execute and every time it executes the x value will be changed to the next alphabet so if it is getting changed to the next alphabet it has to print the alphabet as well because that is what we are asking it to do so if we run it now as you can see g h o u s i a z a b a f a t i m a right so yeah the whole name is getting printed so this is what we use for loop for okay and there are so many use cases we will see all those use cases in our later videos or while writing a complex program but for now uh, to understand this concept this is more than enough so first thing that we need to understand is we can go ahead and iterate throughout the, all the items inside the object no matter if it is a list or tuples or dictionary or set and even inside the string also you can go ahead and iterate in the sense you can go ahead and execute and let's uh, use some of the use cases or let's say some of the some tweaks that we can do with our for loop let's take this as an example if this is a, a string that we have got and let's say um, or or let's say 
we'll take one more example mm, my fav favorite numbers okay and i'll have a list one two three four five six seven eight nine so these are my favorite numbers let's assume these are the fa favorite numbers and now what we need to do we'll write a for loop for x in my favorite numbers colon print x right so now if you do so and run this save and run this program what will happen all the numbers will get printed so one two three four five six seven eight nine so every number is getting printed right so now how to use break statement so what happens here is if i can write let's say um, yeah if x is equals to 5 colon then simply break so what will this do in our while loop what we have learned when do we use break we use break uh, when we want to stop the whole loop if a certain particular condition is met here as you can know as you see here this is a complete for loop because everything whatever we have written is inside this for loop all right inside which inside this for loop we have two commands first command is print x whatever the value of x currently is you print it out second is if the x value is equals to 5 then break the program break the program in the sense stop the program right so now if you see it will run it has to run around nine times but it will run only five times just let's go ahead and see what what is the solution or what is the output and then we can go ahead and discuss further if you scroll down if you can clearly see here one two three four and five right so here as you can see after five the code did not run in the sense the code the for loop did not go ahead and continued with till nine it did not continue so why did it not continue it didn't continue because we have a condition written if statement we have written inside this for loop if x value is 5 then stop the loop but here actually uh, if you if you see if you copy this print and paste it here below a break so now what will happen as soon as x value is 5 the program will stop and even 5 will not get printed right now if you see uh, 5 was getting printed but now if i save this program whatever i have written right now i have changed the place of this print so if i save it because i have written print after breaking in the sense as soon as x hits 5 the program will stop and then print is there so it will not get executed for 5 value so if you run it now scroll down scroll 1 2 3 and 4 right so as it ran five times but it was not able to print five in as an output so this is a use case of break statement through which we can tweak around and make a complex program uh, which we will see obviously in our future videos or uh, programs or projects uh, but for now this is more than enough right now let's go ahead and see how to use the continue word right continue statement or continue word keyword so here if you see um, let me take uh, my fave even numbers okay um let's say two four six eight ten twelve 14, 16, 18, 20, right? So these are the some even numbers that I have listed. So now how to use continue? Let's write for loop for x in my favorite even numbers and then colon print x. What will this do? This will simply pay, uh, print every item value as an output but i can go ahead and use continue statement as well how to use continue statement it will simply skip that particular uh, uh, skip a particular uh, you know a value so how to see it in action let's say if x is equals to 10 
if x is equals to 10 colon then continue what does this mean see for loop will iterate every time uh, to the number of items whatever number of items we have uh, that many times it will keep on iterating so it will run to through 2 4 6 10 and then it will come to 2 4 6 8 and it will come to 10 as soon as it hits 10 first command is we are telling print 10 right in the sense print x so 10 will get printed and then second command is if x is equals to 10 then continue continue in the sense stop this program here itself so whatever we will be writing below x in the sense below this continue statement it will not execute it will stop and run again in the sense the next program next iteration will start so here you, you will see there is no difference if you can save this and run this program you won't find any difference from 2 to 20 2 4 6 8 10, even 10 is getting printed even though the program just skipped still 10 is getting printed because the print function we have written before the continue if i write it below continue you will understand what exactly is this continue doing exactly here so if you save it and run this program now so what will happen 2 4 6 8 10 10 is 10 got skipped because we have written continue statement over there and then it will run to the next iteration but the next iteration is 12 14 16 19 and 20 right so this is how we make use of continue and break statements to tweak around our for loop all right so and this is how we use for loop to loop through or else iterate through or else execute throughout the list items that has been given to us that has been provided to us through an object uh, objects such as list dictionaries tuples sets or even strings as well right so now as you can see here if you take this uh, this as an example if you take this as an example of a, a list then if i write for x in my favorite even numbers and then add colon like this and if you save this code and if you run this program you will get an error expected a indented indented block indented block after if statement in line number 50 line number 50 it's not an if uh, ex exactly it's a for loop yeah so if i save it still you will be getting an error right expected an indented block after for loop in the line number 50 so there has to be some arguments or there has to be some command that we need to give it. that is what is python expecting from us but we haven't given it so sometimes what happens is when we write a long code uh, we write it in a certain format that if this for loop runs only then the other program should run else it should stop so in that case what we need to do and in let's suppose that we have written a program like uh, such a the, such in such a way that the, uh, if this for loop runs only then the other program will run but now to troubleshoot something uh, we have to remove this for loop but i don't want to remove this for loop con uh, totally but what i need to do is i simply can use this statement called as pass if i use this statement i don't have to tell uh, our program to do something or this or that or whatever it is simply pass on simply pass on to the next program and execute all those other programs so now if you save it you will not get any error see we didn't get any error so the programs in a page or in a in a code easily will run through okay so this is how we can you make use of for loop and much more applications are there uh, but we will see that in our later videos but main thing is see whenever we start writing any program or whenever we start creating a project or something uh, if i start using for loop uh, all of a sudden then you will not uh, understand why exactly i did use for loop in the first place you will ask sir you should have used while loop you should have used for loop you should have or let's say if i use a list in some case and if i use some tuples in some case then you will not get uh, an idea of well, so why did you use list why you didn't use tuple in this place right so that kind of minor doubts 
arises only if you don't have a strong understanding of foundation why to use when to use and how to use these are the three foundation things that you need to know and once you know this uh, we can go ahead and do implementation and execution that we will see in our projects anyways so this video was dedicated for for loop and i hope you have clearly understood how to use this for loop from now onwards you will have no questions about for loop if in case if you have any questions please right away ask me uh, whatever doubts you have in for loop okay so we will clarify that and we will proceed to the next chapter right so thank you very much for watching have a great day we'll see you in the next video with one more concept in python programming thank you have a great day